Good morning, everyone. Welcome along to the SFC interviews. This is uh, number 44 that we're doing as well. So we got through uh, quite a lot already. Uh, here with Peter Wynn today. So good morning, Peter. How are you, mate? Morning. You all right? No, I'm fine. Yeah, not too bad. So we've got quite a lot to, to get through in terms of um, your short stint with Stevenage because it was a short stint, but a good stint, as we were just saying off stream as well just now. Uh, so, you know, what was it that kind of attracted you to the club in the first place? Um, well, I was at Gateshead on loan and I played uh, against Stevenage and I played, uh, I think I played all right because, um, well, it sounds really, sounds really funny. This. My dad sent a letter because my dad was my agent at the time. So my dad sent a letter to all clubs and stuff like that. So, um, and then Graham got back to me and said, look, I'd like you to come down. So that's, that's kind of what attracted me. Obviously just been promoted from the conference as well. So, um, it's league football as well. So I was, I was quite happy with that. And obviously I like the setup of the club and that. So it was decent. And then you mentioned uh, Graham Wesley there as well, the the manager at the time. Um, yeah. You know, what was he like to play under for you uh, personally as well? He, he was a sorry, my daughter's just walked in. Um, sorry, just give me two seconds, Baba. Yeah, I'll just turn it back on. I'll turn it back on in a sec. I'm sorry about that. It's, That's it's, fine. Uh, no, no worries, mate. It's all good. Yeah, uh, let me just go sort this out. I do apologise. That's all right, buddy. Do you uh, deal with that? I can talk. I can talk while I'm uh, while I'm yeah. playing. All right. If she's just there. Uh, Turn the telly off, that's all. She's just sat watching there. Well, playing on the PlayStation for some reason. A six year old playing on the PlayStation really works <laughs> quite well. Um, I was hoping this wouldn't happen, but for some reason, that the. Uh... No, that's all right, mate. It's, uh, it's, it's there cool. You go. Yeah. There you go, kid. Right. Sorted. Sorry about that. No, um, sorry. Ask the question again. It was just about Graham. Uh, what was Graham like for you personally? Um, Graham was absolutely fine, but he was just a, a workhorse. It, in that sense, and uh, a bit of a, I will use the term lightly, a nutter in the change room, a nutter on the on the field, and he wanted you to play the way he wanted to play, and and it worked really well. And I think the team we had and the way we played, it it, it showed us, and we got promoted. So. And of course, uh, you made your debut for the club as well on um, the the club's first uh, football league out in against Macclesfield, uh, a team that you went on to to play for later on in your career as well. Um, you know, so what was that like to, to come into the lineup? Um, and it's you know a very settled squad, really a side that's won promotion from the conference, and you know there's quite a lot of um, a buzz around the town as well on the back of that promotion. Yeah, obviously, I'd never, I never expect to play. Even now, playing at Grimsby Borough, wherever I play, I don't expect to play. So I never expected to start the, uh, the, the start of the season. So it was, uh, it was ex exciting, yeah, and obviously. I'll have to say about Macclesfield, I obviously played there as well. And obviously now what's happened to them is an absolute travesty, to be quite honest. Um, the, the Football League, to be quite honest, should have done a lot more um, than what they've done to stop teams like Macclesfield and Berry going under. But going back to Stevenage, yeah, it was it was um, exciting. Obviously, I played played about 30-odd, 30, 30 33, 35 games um, that season. So um, it was a good season all around, it, not just for me, just for, the whole, for the whole squad line. And of course, uh, you know, we, we spoke there about the, the Macclesfield game as well. Uh, was it important for you to come in and impress straight away? Because obviously that, that squad was, you know, very gelled and, and settled. Yeah, well, the squad was, it was a good, a very good squad. Very strong, like I say, obviously, technically good squad. Um, to come in and, and try and play the best of my ability so I could keep my shirt, basically. Because obviously, there's a lot of players in the team, the squad rotation, and um, you have to be at your best every single game. And uh, we've got, um, well, we, we've got to talk about the the moment where it all kind of took off for you in a Stephen and shirt as well. Uh, the Newcastle game was your first goal for the club as well. So, you know, uh, I, don't, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think you scored in the league before. I know you scored a couple after in the league. Um, and, you know, you've come off the bench and you've sealed it with the, the last kick of the game pretty much um, for the 3-1 victory. Yeah, I would say it took, it took a while to, to get me... Yeah kicked off if you know what I mean um I didn't score obviously I was playing left wing so I've I see myself as more creator creator than a goal scorer but yeah I got a couple of goals after that but that goal was uh is the highlight of my career obviously playing against Newcastle scoring against Newcastle beating Newcastle as well obviously all the uh, history around the actual game as well from what happened before and stuff like that so it was nice to to be able to be a part of that and um obviously win the game as well and of course, uh, you know, you mentioned there about the, the history. Were you guys, you know, the players aware of the history from the the past as well, from back in the 90s? Yeah, we were aware of the history. We were aware of it 
it, there was a bit of animosity there and we needed to win the game and and stuff like that so yeah it was a uh, it was a tough game all around but obviously the lads played really well and obviously we got a good win out of it and it was obviously written into the history book so we're happy and of course the uh, I, I watched that game back and it's the, the commentary um, for your winning goal there as well. I think it was John uh, John Champion's commentary was. It's quite iconic actually when you when you hear the commentary uh, of that that uh, particular game and that goal as well. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I haven't actually heard the commentary. I've seen the yeah, obviously goal on replays, but I've not actually heard the commentary. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was it was surreal. Um, as I I think I, I've got a paper clip in it, and it says that I I just. Scored the goal, ran off, went mental, and it was. I think everybody did. To be fair, it was absolutely. It was brilliant. It was the best, like I say, the best time of my career at that point. Yeah. So and there was a big uh, pitch invasion and everything after as well. So yeah, definitely uh, everybody yeah. went mental. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not wrong there. We won't talk too much about what happened with Scott, but yeah, I was, I was just about to say that. We'll we'll, we'll keep the uh, pitch invasion uh, away from this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and of course, uh, part of that lineup as well was was Robbo. Robbo was your captain. So, what was it like with with Robbo? What was he like as a leader? He was a very good leader. He obviously talked you talked you through the game, talked to everybody through the game, before the game, after the game, away from football. He was he's a he's a born leader to be fair, and he's a pro, he's a good centre back, proper centre back, and he's a proper leader. So, I, I can't really say much more than praising him with that to be fair, because he's a he's a very good player. Well, like all the players. At that time, they're very good players. So, okay, um, we'll go. Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah. So, um, what was I going to say? There was one. That was Robbo. Did I say anything else? About <laughs> that? That, that was Graham. I've made notes, mate. As you can see. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, yeah. So you also played alongside, you know, club legend and the re- the new record holder now as well, Ronnie Henry. Uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about him and. You know, of course, he's gone on and he's had his testimonial and everything as well. So, you know, yeah, a was, real Stephen Hage icon. It was uh, it was nice to be a part of his uh, testimonial and stuff like that. But he's uh, obviously a proper right back. He he can well, he can play centre back. He can play everywhere. But he's been he's been around long enough to know what he can do. Again, he's a, like you say, he's a legend and he's a legend of the game as well. And he's now a record holder, so he'll he'll be in the club's history forever now, which is fantastic for him. He's uh, he's a nice bloke as well, to be fair. So. He's, but he's, like you say, he's an exceptional right back and exceptional football player. So, yeah. Um, what else have we got on here? So, yeah, actually, after the, the Newcastle game, you went on and scored against Rotherham as well in a 3 0 victory, um, scoring a 20 yard goal. Uh, 20 I remember yard that goal, goal. Yeah, I remember it's that a, goal. It's a nice yeah. finish, wasn't it, as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I think I played up front that game as well. Um, I just ran onto it, obviously running onto it, and then just had a shot from twenty yards. I just thought, saw the gap, and you don't really think about it when you do it. You just see the goal and think, actually, I can get a shot off it. So you do, but obviously, I'm not a born striker. So me just whipping a shot off is and getting a goal is is great. Someone like I'll use like Byron or Byron Harrison or Craig Reed. They're natural finishers, so mm-hmm. they'll take the time more. They'll be able to put it in a position. Me, I'm obviously more of a, like I say more of a creator. So I'll, I'll just have a snapshot, and if it goes in, great. That's why I haven't scored that many goals in my career, and that's probably why I play left back now, because I was never a goal scorer. But it was nice to get another goal straight, literally straight. Well, a couple of weeks or whatever straight after the uh, Newcastle game as well. It was uh, nice to uh, carry on a goal scoring streak. Yeah, it was the the next home game after. I think there was a, a game in between away, but it was the, yeah. the, the home game uh, against Rotherham just after two weeks after. Yeah. Yeah, it was. They say it was fantastic, and the atmosphere around the club at that time was brilliant as well. Because obviously we'd just beat Newcastle, and it was we was all buzzing, and, and we carried on the momentum through the season after that, and obviously got in the playoffs, got promoted, which is you know top it off, top the season off. You know, two two major wins in that sense. It was good. Yeah, and uh, we we talked about that one. Um, yeah, and then you also scored against uh, Port Vale as well. Um, and that was the, I think that was the only other time you scored for the club. I think you scored three in total, wasn't it? So. Yeah, well, I think I scored against Cardiff in pre-season. I think that was my first pre-season game. But apart from that, yeah, I think that was the yeah. only, only three goals I scored, to be quite honest. Do you remember much about that game against Port Vale? Because there was the, the crazy own goal in there, weren't there, as well? 
I can't, to be fair, I can't remember much much about that game now. I can't, obviously, I can remember, like I said, I remember the Newcastle game, I remember the Rotherham goal, but I, I can't even remember scoring against Port Vale. I must have scored because you, you're bringing it up. But yeah, yeah. It's, like I say, a lot of it's uh, you remember the uh, like the Newcastle and stuff, but it's it's a blur. A lot of a lot of the career after that a blur, unless you've got snippets of it on your phone or whatever. Then yeah. Fair enough. Um, and it was a long time ago as well. So it was, it was, it was <laughs> I'm not old, but it's a long time ago. Yeah, fairly uh, long enough, of, but long, long yeah. enough at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we kind of have to touch on this. I don't really want to touch on it, but we have to a little bit. Uh, the red card against Southend. Um, when I, still, I remember that, mate. I remember that. Um, <laughs> on, not only, but I remember it. Yeah. Um, of course, we went on to lose shot. that game. John Messino missing the penalty as well. Yeah. So against Southend, the way she, I. I caught Sean Claude Hesse in the uh, face, didn't I, with my foot? Yeah, I remember it. Um, Daisy clearing the ball, and I've, for some reason I've gone to bring the ball down over my head with my foot. And he's obviously seen an opportunity, he's tried to edit, but obviously seen me head, I mean, seen my foot there. And, and so he's obviously just decided I'm going to put my head where it hurts and get myself sent off, get me sent off. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, my only ever red card. I think. Um, I don't think no, I haven't had one since um, all before. So I was good at that game, and um, obviously let the guys down that game. But um, yeah, I can't really say much more about having a red card. It's, it's no, probably yeah. the worst thing for a football player, and it getting red carded, getting sent off because then you've obviously straight red mystery games puts you out of the team. Um, then you obviously yeah you work hard to get back in the team, but it it, that, it puts you back a bit, and you don't really want that. And uh, of course, you you were able to come back in for the second leg of the playoffs, though, which was uh, the game against Accrington. We've already a couple of goals up, um, and you come on. I think you come on as a sub, didn't you, in that one? So yeah, it was the worst pitch I've probably ever played in league football. That was horrendous, the pitch. But yeah, the lads had done really well before that, and obviously got themselves a couple of goals up. And I think we was uh, I've probably been been brought on to waste a bit of time, but it was I was nice. To, it was just nice to get on the pitch, really, and uh, and then be able to celebrate. The lads, obviously, we'd we'd made it to the playoff uh, final after that, and it was uh, it was really nice, yeah. But the lads did really well that game, and and they played really well, and obviously got the win. So I was happy as well as them. And of course, uh, you know, we, we'll touch on um, the the final as well. I know you you weren't actually a part of the final, but you obviously would have travelled down with the boys. So what was it like? To, uh, I was on I was on the bench, and obviously we played a. Um, it was it was nice to warm up on Wembley. Uh, not Wembley. Yeah. Um, it was all traffic. Oh, traffic. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been oh, up on Wembley before, but yeah. Um, yeah, it was all traffic. It was nice to get on the pitch. Well, I actually support the team. Um, you know, Man United. I support them, so it was nice to get on the pitch and um, be a part of it and and stuff like that. But again, it's a team game. So whether I'm on the bench, whether I'm playing, I want the team to win. So and when we did, so I, uh, if we'd have lost, then I, I'd have been a bit disappointed that I didn't get on and try and you know create something, but. It was nice to um, be a part of the winning team, yeah. There's quite a lot of, um, you know, the, the Stevenage fans that travelled down as well that day. Um, and you, the, even the goal itself was a goal worthy of, of winning any game, really, with, with Moose's finish. So. Oh, it was, what can you say? It's 30, what, 25, 30 yards out? He's, he's, he's run with it, caught it, caught it absolutely perfect. I watched the replay a few times, actually, from behind. You can see it from behind the goal and you can tell it bobbled up a little bit and he's caught it. Absolutely sweet and... Well, it's a goal worthy of winning a game, isn't it? So, you know, fair play to Torquay. They were a decent team, but I think we outplayed them that game as well. And, and the lads played really well again. So, it's all we can ask for, really, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And then, obviously, the trademark celebration that he had as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't look too good in my head when I've got no hair like but, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he, he was a very good player as well, obviously, most of us. So he's gone on to have a great career, so... Just like all the lads. Um, so we we touched on that. Uh, do you believe that the club could have gone on the chief promotion um, to League One as well if if Wesley had stayed and you know everything hadn't happened around that? A big question. Yeah, it's one of them things you, you never really know because obviously if he stayed, it could have gone brilliantly or it could have gone pear shaped. But obviously he's gone on to bigger and better things at, at that point, and um, a new manager's come in and and he's changed the team around, but. Even with the new manager coming in, you never know. He could have, he could have got promoted then as well. We had the, still had the squad, the, the core squad together. Obviously, I went to on loan to Cambridge and Grimsby after that, but ninety um, percent of the team stayed together. So you, you never know. It's one of them hindsight things, isn't it? In 
and if he had stayed, I would say if he'd have stayed, yeah, I, I wouldn't see why we wouldn't because we'd have had the same mentality, the same work rate, the same training as what we had in League Two. So, and he added to the squad, he added better players to the squad. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we we would have got promoted or got close to anyway. Yeah, but we we were close to it as it was. Uh, yeah, under, under Gary. So yeah, but again. You, <laughs> If he'd have stayed, you never know, dear. But it'd have been nice to see him stay and, and maybe get him into get him into higher leagues again. Um, but obviously, he came back a few times, didn't he? But <laughs> I was going to say that yeah. as well. Actually, that was my next point. Um, you know, what were your thoughts? You know, even uh, last season when he came back and he had that little stint last season. Um, it's not always easy coming back to a club. I know what's was that about four times he's been back now, but. Um, you know, it can always go one or two ways. It depends what players you've got as well. If the players go with you, buy into what you're trying to do, then great. If they don't, um, it again, it can go pear shaped. But like you say, on when we was in League Two, we had the we had the team that bought into everything that he wanted to do, and he brought players in that wanted to do that as well. So it worked. Same with him, the team with the conference; they bought into it, so they got promoted. We got promoted to League League One. If it had stayed, brought in players that he'd bought into it, you never know. It, it, but these two stints obviously didn't go the best. You know, that's just that's just the way it is sometimes. And he's not it doesn't make him a bad manager or a bad coach or anything like that. It's just it's just the way it is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's uh, I'm sure he'll be back in management in no time at all as well. He's yeah. Just taking a bit of time for himself as as he probably needed to do, yeah. I don't blame him. He's uh He's got. I think he had other businesses to uh, attend to as well, so he's probably dealing with all that that he has to deal with as well as football. So he'll be back in football at some point, I'm sure, and uh, he's good enough to do it, so he'll be fine. And then you made one appearance the following season as well. Uh, you came on an extra time, actually, against Peterborough um, in the, the Carabao Cup there, the 4-3 the game. Um, you know, so... Uh, what did you make to that sort of that that game? Obviously, playing against a, a side that were a little bit higher up as well. It's always it's always hard playing against a team higher up, but then you you get the um, it's really strange because I do it now. It's like I know it's a rubbish league that I play now, or whatever you want to call it rubbish. It's it's football at the end of the day compared to League Two, but or yeah. League One. But I seem to play better against the better teams and worse against the worst teams. So you kind of step yourself up to um, to what you're playing against, and you think right, well. I'm going to show you kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's difficult sometimes. Sometimes you have a great game. Sometimes it just doesn't go to plan, even if you're trying 100%. But um, having one game in that season, it was nice to just get one game, to be fair. Um, I knew, I kind of knew when the new manager came in um, and obviously what Graham had brought in before that, that um, I wasn't really going to feature too much. And that's probably why I went on loads of Cambridge. That's why I went on loads of Grimsby. Um, which was probably beneficial to me rather than just sitting and just festering on a bench or festering in a stand. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was um, it was nice to get a game. It was nice to get a bit of game time, obviously. Um, I think that season I sat on the bench against the other time was I sat on the bench against Tottenham away. And, That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went, and then the next day I went out loads to Grimsby. So, it swings and roundabouts of football. It's, it happens to every football player. It's a it's a tough game to be in, and I think if you look look from the outside to the inside, if you look from the outside, people think, "Oh, it's it's easy. You're playing football. You know that you've got you're living the life." And it's not actually like that. It's a lot more difficult than that. You, you're competing with other people to get a new contract and and play football, and you can only play eleven players at a time. And you've got a team, a squad, a squad of twenty five. So it it. It is a bit difficult, and I, I, all players will relate to that from Premier League downwards. They, they all want to play. Obviously, you want to earn as much money as you can, but it's only a short career. But I think if you look from the outside, they don't. People that have never played it don't understand that. If you know what I mean, mm -hmm. they understand that you, you're constantly under pressure every single day to to be the best you can be to get. And yeah, I think obviously, I I admit I hit my level when I played League Two and Conference. I don't mm -hmm. really think I. Sounds I'm putting myself down. It's not really putting myself down, but I don't think if if I'd have gone to League One Championship, I don't know if I'd have been. If you know what I mean, like I yeah, 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 okay, I'd have, I'd have progressed. So I I kind of stick stuck with League Two and Conference, which worked for me. It was absolutely fine. But like you say, um, it's just nice to get game time and and play. 
And even, you know, you spoke about a little bit earlier, the Newcastle game as well. And, you know, you said it there, you played better against the bigger teams. Um, mm. I think that was the same with everybody, really, in that squad. And, you know, I, I remember I, I spoke to Robbo, I spoke to, to Laurie, I spoke to Lairdy as well already um, as part of the, the other 43 that I've already done. And, and they've all said the same in regards to, uh, you know, it was... Um, going out there and you know just putting fear into everybody really that was how graham set everybody up yeah yeah well basically he used to uh i think once he walked down the uh tunnel and um he got me in headlock because he wanted me to be pumped up he wanted because the fact he wanted to fight me it was the fact he, he wanted me to fight me to pump me up and it, it works he does it he did it with everyone and obviously we got pumped up for that game and and he tried to do that every single game and i think that's what helped again with getting promoted the adrenaline was pumping you didn't want to go out there and have a bad game, not because you didn't want to be bollocked or out like that, but you you wanted to be there and you wanted to play the next week because you know if you had a bad game, you'd you wouldn't play. Yeah. Sorry, my daughter's just jumping in front of me again. That's all right, mate. Okay, go 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 play, and I'll be in in a minute. No, I can't. You right, buddy? Sorry about that. She's. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, basically, back back to what I was going with. Obviously, I can't remember what I was saying now, but it's uh, it's just gone out. About of um, Graham and uh, uh, having a little. Oh bit of yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he, he always got everyone. It wasn't just one person. He got the whole squad, the whole sixteen, whole eighteen, or whatever it was, pumped up for that game. And hmm. that I think that's why we did so well that that season. Yeah. Okay. Um. So we've we've, we've kind of touched on that one already. Um, you you know you said about the the couple of loans as well the Cambridge and Grimsby loans you've already mentioned that so that's fine I've got a, a look over that uh, so you left the club permanently to sign for Macclesfield um, yeah yeah you know, it's it's very full circle actually with, with yourself and even with Stevenage and Macclesfield as well because obviously Macclesfield were the team that we played on your debut yeah um, coming full circle to Macclesfield it was. Um... Again, it was a strange one going there because I, I um, sorry, that's fine. What's wrong, Baba? Yeah, I'm on the phone. Do you want to come sit with me? Do you want to come sit and see what I'm doing? Come here, then. Sorry, I'll go sit with me. That's fine, mate. Yeah, yeah cool. cool. Can't be quiet, okay? Yeah, yeah, going to Macclesfield and that. It was, um, it was Steve King that, um, that I was on loan with Northwich when I was at Scunthorpe. He, he said he rang me and said, Look, I want you here. And stuff like that, which was absolutely fantastic. So I went there, I had a two-year two year contract. But they had problems when I was there with financial. Uh, the first season, we, we all signed. We all, and then the owner, who was the same owner that obviously sent them into liquidation, yeah. um, decided, oh, I wasn't going to pay you. And so I went three or four, well, the whole squad went three or four months without being paid. We got it all back, like, but it was the, the point is that... Sorry. <laughs> the, so the point good, yeah, the um, it was a good time at Macclesfield, but it was difficult with financial implications, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, well, I don't really want to touch too much on the whole situation between the two clubs that saw Stephen get the reprieve um, and, and, and send Macclesfield down, but... It's a, it, it is great for a club of Stevenage's kind of stature to still be in the Football League. Obviously, you know, to, to happen in, in other circumstances would have been a lot more ideal and a lot better for, you know, yourself personally and, and Macclesfield. And, you know, I don't want to touch too much on the ownership and things like that, but it is great for a club like Stevenage to still remain in the Football League. Yeah, you never want any team to go down. You never want any team to get relegated, especially the team that you've been playing for, like Macclesfield, Grimsby, um, Stevenage. But... Um, because I'd done so much, it sounds really bad. This I've done so much with Stevenage compared to Macclesfield, like get promoted and the Newcastle game and the history. Um, I actually wanted Stevenage to stay up. I didn't want any other team to go down, but yeah, preferably. I'd, I'd, I think for the for the um, for the club itself and what the club does for the community and stuff like that, con compared to other clubs, um, I think. They should have well. They should have stayed up. It was too good to go down. To be quite honest, I think they got themselves into a bit of a rut and they couldn't get out of it. But they didn't deserve to go down. I don't think it would have been right if they went down. If you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, we we touched on it beforehand as well off off stream a little bit that you're 
Uh, still with Grimsby, is it Grimsby Borough as well? Um, yeah, Grimsby Borough. Yeah, yeah. It's just um, obviously it's an amateur local team now. That obviously I I I, I work full time now. I work for a company yeah. called Hand Trans, um, which is just I just I'm a transport planner now. So which I which I enjoy. It's a it's a decent job. Obviously, it's not not playing football every week and you're working eight ten hours a day. But it's um, there's life after football at the end of the day, and 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 it. You have to start again at some point, whether it be at 28, whether it be at 40 um, with football. So I'd love to stay in coaching. I'd, I'd love to go and coach. But obviously, there's that many coaches out there at the minute that you can't really uh, get any coaching jobs at this point in time, especially with you need your UEFA B, which I haven't got and stuff like that. So. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then, uh, you know, we touched on it a little bit earlier about your, your change in formation, uh, your change in position, sorry, as well. Uh, to move sort of more to left back, sort of full back. Um, how how do you find that sort of playing in a, a more sort of you know um, further I, back position? I, I think I dropped back because I'm I'm uh, I'm about three stone overweight now, and uh, I'm not as quick as I used to be. So, um, but no, it's it's a lot easier. It's it's, it's not a it's not a, an easy league, but it's not a hard league at the same time. So, um, I thought I'd drop back to left back. I'd play. You know, use my ability on a football to be able to just pass and move, and you let the ball do the work. Because, like you say, I'm not the quickest anymore. I don't really look after my body like I looked after it when I was a when I was a professional. So, um, it does get a bit harder as you get a bit older, as I'm finding. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and then, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Alex Ravel coming in as as manager now? Do you know much about Alex and and Lenny Lawrence being part of that setup as well? I don't know too much about Alex, but I know obviously um, at, at Ronnie's testimonial was there. I was in the same team as him. I had a chat with him just just in general. He seems like a nice bloke, and he's young enough to to learn. So I can't see why it wouldn't work. And yeah, you the problem is you've got to. He's a young manager. You've got to give faith to him. You've got to let him do what he's doing. We lose, we lose. It, you know, don't just get rid of him because we're losing or we're we're, we're not top of the league or we're not in the top 15 it, yeah. there's a process and i think we need to go you need to go through the process and let him and yeah if it gets if it gets two two and a half years down the line and it's not working then fine but don't you everybody's always looking for a quick fix and i don't think you're really going to get a quick fix in in league two football you need to build and build before you can before you can progress and that's what it's a bit like graham did he mm-hmm. built from conference up all the way to League One, so I think that's what we need to start doing again. I'm saying we as I'm I'm there now, like, but you know, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and then uh, you just mentioned there in regards to to Alex there um, being in you know in that team of him in the for Ronnie's testimonial as well. Um, so yeah, what about Lenny Lawrence? Of course, Lenny Lawrence is a is a huge name around football as well. Um, yeah, he's a huge name around football. He's a huge name around Grimsby as well. To be quite honest, he was manager. I think he was. I think he was manager Daddy. once or twice. Um, so yeah, he's he, he's good having that experience there. So I can't. Sorry, what's up? It's all right, mate. You want... There you go. Right, you need to go sit over there and watch it because it'd be too loud. Go on. Turn it down. There you go. Yes, he's a big name. He's a big name in football as well. Obviously, it was I think he was at Cardiff as well, wasn't he? Then he's been around. Yeah, he's been at loads of clubs. Yeah, he's been at loads of clubs. Yeah, I think he, Newport like, was one as well. Yeah, experience. It can only help. You know, we were a young manager as well. It can only help to have experience there to be able to to be able to give him the right guidance, be able to give him the right maybe knowledge on players and stuff like that. Obviously, um, Alex is just starting out, so hopefully it'll it'll work and and they can build on it from there. And of course, you know, you said about giving the manager um, a, a chance as well, no matter how things have been going. And things haven't been going great in the last few weeks. The club are uh, seven games in all competition without a win. But it's important. Obviously, it's a, a whole new squad as well. It, it, don't get me wrong. Football is about winning. It's about, at the end of the day, you win, you win games, you win leagues, you lose games, you get relegated. Simple as that. But... When you've got a manager that's so young and, and you, you've put faith in him th- it, there and then, you need to give him that time to be able to progress. Yeah, next season, you know, you might have a 
a mediocre season this season, but next season he might win the league. You yeah, never know. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's worth it if you want to give give him faith, then let him do what he's got to do. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense actually. The you know the club are sort of renowned for that as well. Um, you can go back, you know, to Darren Soul, to Teddy Sheringham. There's lots of other guys that have been given the chance as well. You know, up and coming uh, managers. You know, Sheringham, of course, was a, a big player, but that was his first managerial stint. And, and Darren had to spell with the youth team and, and not actually the seniors until you know, given that opportunity at at the club. So yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's all about opportunities, isn't it? At the end of the day, you can try it with youngsters. You can try it with younger managers. If at the end of the day, try it, try it. As long as you don't get relegated. You know, then you start again. Then you'll go to a more experienced manager that knows the game, knows how to play it better, maybe. You know, and and that might build up someone like a Graham Wesley who's been in the game a long time. You know, he, not, not Graham though. We don't want him back for a fifth time. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I was just I was using an example, but yeah, I know what you say. <laughs> maybe you do. Maybe you do. Maybe that's what they need. You don't. You never know, do you? Uh, that's the problem with football. You never know. You never know what's around the corner. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, um, yeah. but yeah you've got to give him the opportunities at the end of the day and and he'll get there in the end and if he doesn't then he doesn't at least it's been tried and then you start again yeah and then we've got the you know we've got a touch on the community stuff as well you said it's always been a community-based club and during um the, the lockdown and the coronavirus pandemic as well the club were you know very active in, in terms of being out and about and delivering sandwiches and prescriptions and things like that as well. So did you sort of see much about that? Yeah, well, I saw it all on Facebook and that. Yeah, it's not all about, but it wasn't all about the volunteers. The players were getting involved, the management yeah. were getting involved. And that shows, well, it shows the community is together. And that's, it's always been like, even when I was there, it was like that. We used to go out and do little bits and bobs. And and it's obviously built from there. So you've got, the, obviously, you've got the foundation as well. So that's even better. So it, as long as they keep building it, and keep it as a community it'll be a community club and and it'll keep building from there that's why you get fans back every week that's why you get a lot of fans in mm -hmm. um and then uh you know what about the the importance of of the fans as well um obviously for this current circumstance that we're under right now the fans have to rely on uh watching it via the the streams on on iFollow and things like that but how important is it to get the fans back into the stadiums as quickly as you can um, club financially, it's uh, massively important, obviously, because that's what brings in a lot of the revenue for the clubs and and to pay staff to pay players to keep the club keep the club running. Well, as you as you see in in the um, in the Premier League, when you've got like the Liverpool's that were smashing teams last season with a fa with load of fans and the cat and the, and the struggle to lose the the losing seven two against Aston Villa because it is the fans give the atmosphere which builds the players up, which give the players momentum to win them games, and that's the difference. I'll use again Liverpool as an example and Man United that the struggle at the minute because they haven't got that atmosphere to build the player up. And it, it is difficult. Uh, I've not really um, seen it too much because I'm at Grimsby Borough and you're allowed up to 300 fans and they don't get, yeah. they get about that. So when you get, when you, when you're playing in an empty stadium and, and you can hear yourself think it seems like a friendly game. That's what it mm -hmm. come across as like a friendly game. So you can't get yourself up as much for it, which you'll try. But fans are massively important, to be quite honest, for all aspects of football. They need to be in stadiums, to be quite honest. And you've said that you're, you know, uh, when you're you're playing at Grimsby Borough, you're getting the three hundred fans in as well. Uh, you know, what's it all like? To uh, does it change quite a lot on the back of obviously COVID from from last season um, in terms of getting the fans in? Not really. Obviously, your procedures have changed. Like they have the, the um, what's it called, the NHS app thing that you have to scan and stuff like that when people when fans come in and sanitise yeah. and they take your name and and stuff like that, which is obviously a longer drawn out process. But um, down at this level, no, it hasn't really changed too much. To be quite honest, we we got fans back in and it didn't really do didn't really do too much to the game. But obviously, up at the higher levels, it does it, it does a lot to the game, as you can see financially as well as. As well as having an empty stadium, you're playing a a game where, like I say, it seems like a friendly game because you can hear yourself think, you can hear you, you can hear everybody. It's like a I'd say it, watching it on watching it on the uh, TV. It looks like you're watching a reserve game, yeah, where, yeah, where there's not very many people there. But it is what it is at the minute, and hopefully they'll get it sorted. They'll get 
COVID out of the way and we'll be able to go back to some sort of normality. Um, and then we'll, we'll touch on the mental health aspect as well uh, for, for players, you know, even at, at your level where you're playing now, how important is that kind of uh, to get all of that right as well? Um, it's not too bad at our level because obviously our level people have got uh, normal jobs and stuff like that. So they go to work and they'll go and, and socialise with their work friends as well as the football friends. So it's like, it's not too bad. But with football, obviously you are quite isolated when you don't, at top level anyway, like you've, I've just seen to, today on uh, a Man City 17-year-old has just... Um, yeah, he took his own life. And, yeah. and they should be looking after him more. They should, when, once them, especially at the top level, because obviously they get released. They don't know what to do with themselves. So it's like they need to be, they need to be guided to be able to... Oh, I'll get, I've got my agent. I'm going to take you to this club. I'm going to take you to this club. I'm going to get you sorted. Or how are you feeling? It's not. It's not just about. Oh, I'm going to send you to a um, to a mental health practitioner or whatever you want to call them to, yeah. Yeah, to yeah. be able to, to see what's wrong with you. It's about mm-hmm. somebody. Not every day, but every every couple of days. Going. How are you? How, how are you yeah. doing? You're just being released, but how are you doing? You know, we'll get through this. Don't worry about it. But no one does that. No one does that to players. Well, oh, it seems like they don't do it. So I think they need to step up the game on that more to be able to bring younger players through without the pressure because they feel too much pressure and they don't know how to, as a youngster, they don't know how to handle it. It's not mm-hmm. like, it's not like a, someone my age where they get released from a club and it's like they've been around for 10 or 15 years already Yeah, because you just think, oh, right, well, it's just natural. But a 17 year old getting released, it's, it's dejection, it's rejection and mm-hmm. they, they, they don't know how to handle it. They can't process it properly. They're still only teenagers at the end of the day. So, I think I think a lot more needs to be done in the mental aspect. Yeah, I do. And even you know, going into the the, the actual sort of dressing room and things like that as well. I know there's the, the sort of banter and the camaraderie around the training ground and around the squads and stuff. But you know, with the the manager, uh, maybe they could bring in somebody as well to actually maybe have somebody in once a week or you know once a month or whatever. Yeah, um, it's not just about that. I think the the older the older players as well. They, they will look after the younger players. And I think it's all about um, team bonding as well. Making sure everybody, not not feel wanted, but is part of it. Mm-hmm. If you feel part of it, then you feel happier. Even if you're not playing. You know, you get involved in training, you get involved in games, you get involved in warm-ups. And even if a youngster coming through that's, that's, that's good enough, say, to play in the first team at uh, 17, Bring him in, make sure he's he's happy. Yeah, have the banter and that, but make sure he's happy as well. Because the the old like I say, the older players will be able to deal with it mentally. The younger players don't know how to yet, so that's where the older players come in to be able to 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 nurture him, to be able to be mentally strong. Yeah. Because a lot of players nowadays they don't get that, so they're not mentally strong. And as soon as they get rejected, it's the end of the world. Mm-hmm. In, their, in their head, it's the end of the world. So it's a tough subject to have, but a lot more needs to be done about it to be able to get players mentally stronger in all aspects of life, not just football. Knowing okay. that, there's, knowing that there's um, life after football. Yeah. So you know, you've mentioned before, just just a little bit ago, that you're a United fan as well. So who were your sort of role models and, and inspirations? Uh, you know, from from uh, the the football and. Um, sort of world and out of the footballing world as well? Uh, in the footballing world, I'd say uh, when I was playing left wing and when I was younger, it was uh, Ryan Giggs and obviously Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, I, w- I would say I've got, well, my role model apart from obviously people like my dad and, and, yeah. and family and stuff like that. I haven't really got major role models outside of football because I didn't really look at it like that. But um, yeah, in football, I'd always look at Ryan Giggs, probably the main one, and thinking... I want to be like him. I don't need to do a step over. I know Ronaldo does or whatever, but I didn't need to do a step over. I'm quick enough to run past him and do the jinky movements at Ryan Giggs. So I kind of try to replicate that and just obviously end product. So that they're, they're basically my role models, them and, him and Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. And you're up there in the same breath as, as Ryan Giggs as well, to be honest. You both scored a, a, a good FA Cup goal, so there you go. <laughs> I would say I would say is is a... Uh, a lot better than what mine was. Um, the fact that he took on about seven players yeah, and it was yeah, yeah. against Arsenal as well. And uh, yeah, but it was again and it was nice to uh, nice to get get recognised for, 
for scoring a goal like that. And obviously, it's not just about me, though. It was about the other two goals that scored. It was about the, the team, the squad, the club, really, as well. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a nice day. And obviously, it was nice for the club as well. Uh, just got a message here from Liam as well. Just says, love it, Winnie. Say hello from Husey. <laughs> Liam Hughes, I love it. Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> he's a nice bloke as well. He is play for Cambridge and stuff like that. He's a, he's good. It's good what he's doing. Again, again, the mental health thing. Um, yeah. I think he's he's called Wand. Um, obviously, look at it on Twitter and stuff like that. It's it's mm-hmm. great. It's his it's his mental health. I, I'll use business because I don't know how he goes about it, but he, he helps younger players and stuff like that. And um, that's what we need more of. People like him that do stuff like that for players, not just for players. It's for anybody as well. I think. Um, that, that's feeling down, feeling depressed, or that. Get in touch. Get in touch with anyone. You know, fantastic. And Liam's fantastic. What he's done is brilliant. There's another mate of mine actually, who I, uh, you know, little community that we're a part of on Twitch. Um, where well, this is actually going out across as well. Uh, one of the platforms it's going out across. Um, his name is Lee. Is uh, he's got the evolving mindset. Uh, he's the, the company director of that, and that's another sort of mental health based. Uh, yeah. Charity as well, organization. Yeah. It, a lot. You'll see a lot of them, obviously. There's a lot of them going around. You just need to find where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the help at the end of the day, that's what it's there for. It's there to help people. And there's no shame in getting in touch with, with them about it because it's only for your benefit. Um, so we've just got a couple more, uh, not too much more, really. Um, so uh, how did you get up for a, a big game? You know, what was your sort of go-to uh, preparation like? Uh, I'd go to a cafe and have a full-on fry-up, I think. That's what yeah. I used to do. Well, we used to train so hard at, at Stephen is that it didn't really matter what you ate because you'd burn it off straight away. Mm-hmm. But I used, yeah, I used to go and have a have a fry-up every Saturday morning. Not not a massive one, but um, it just, again, it, it's not about it's not about what it is about what you put in your body, but at the end of the day, that made me happy as well. So I thought, oh, I'd be nice, you know. I've got my energy, you know. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, you know. And and that's how I went about it. Yeah. Um, and did you have a sort of motivational um, track or, or band that you would listen to as well? No, I normally just um, gather me thoughts. To be quite honest, I just sit sit there. I listen. There'll be the music on anyway and stuff like that. Obviously, yeah. but I'd normally just sit where I get changed and I'll just think about the game and, and, and think about how I'm, what I'm going to do and how I'm going to go about it. And I won't really shout and ball at, 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 like some, some players do like to try and get other people up, up and motivated and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just, I just gather my thoughts and, and then go out there and, and try it. Cause it's all about calming. You, you don't want to go out there too anxious because, then you'll if you make a mess up if you mess up you're a bit like oh no oh no I've messed up now but yeah. I'll just you know calm myself down if I if I make a mistake it's not the end of the world again you know you just make amends for your mistake and that's mm-hmm. how I go about it now yeah I'm quite a calm person so yeah you can see that anyway it's quite evident um, yeah. and uh, we've just got probably maybe one or two more actually um, so let's just make sure there's nothing else that I hadn't. Just give over this one. Uh, yeah, we spoke about the fans already as well. Um, and yeah, so obviously the, the other one really would just be, uh, you know, sort of how do you reckon the club will, will do this season under Alex and, and Lenny? Um, of course, it's a, a whole sort of change of manager from, from the last couple of seasons. Now he's come in, I think he had about three games before COVID hit and he's only had... I think about nine or so now uh, this season as well, maybe ten in all competitions. Again, like you say, it's it, like you say with it being a bad bad start to the season, you you just got to give them time. I I think maybe mid table this season would probably you know mid table to tenth. That's what you should be aiming for, especially with the the bad start. But again, it's all about the process. You just you just build up, keep people confident, keep people motivated. You know, if you make a mistake, don't matter. You know, just get on with it. You know, I made. A, we lost five 0 yesterday. My team. You right. Know, I, I made the mistake for the first goal. You know, it is what it is. It's just life. You you, you can't change what you've done, mm-hmm. but you can change what's going to happen after. So just go out, play your game, 
you know, it's 90 minutes at the end of the day. So if you and so you work, so you work your socks off. I nearly said the other one then. If you work your yeah, socks yeah. off, yeah, yeah, there's people to come on. Don't worry about that. Just work hard, work hard, work hard. If you've got to come off because you're tired, don't matter. It means you've worked hard. You know, if you have a bad game, it don't matter if you have a bad game. Just work hard, and that that kind of offsets it a little bit. So, but I'm hoping that they'll they'll finish mid table this season and then build from there. And obviously, once you're mid table, it gives you a bit of confidence to go a bit higher. Just keep slowly building, and I think that's what 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 Stephen is need to do now because obviously, like you say, it's a bad start to the season. They had a couple of mediocre years, mm-hmm. so it's just all about the building process now. All right, we'll uh, leave it there, actually. So thanks for taking some time out this morning as well um, yeah. and coming to join for this. And uh, no, it's, it's been good to speak to you, mate. It's been good to see, speak to you as well. Yeah, take care of yourself. Yeah, you too. And uh, best of luck with, with Grimsby Borough for the rest of the season as well. Thank you very much. You take care. See you soon. See you, mate. Take it easy. Bye, Bye. Bye now.